everyone uh, but once again welcome back uh, i am back with the same series i hope you guys are uh, liking the way things are moving right hum log aaj fir se naqshebazi karne ja rahe hain kya karne ja rahe hain let's let's try and find out i'm going to today in this next video i'm going to focus upon uh, uh, building a map related uh, understanding of the earliest trade routes this is again one of the very key topics in uh, upsc in the past i have noticed a lot of references in the paper uh, around this topic right the trade routes they will typically be asking about the cities around it uh, no direct question on uttar path uh, or dakshin path but yes definitely uh, yeah this is something which you should know right so uh, let's try and let's try and uh, uh, learn more okay uh, and i will try and give you a glimpse glimpse of how the trade routes developed okay now have you wondered right have you wondered uh, we have been told this right so many people from north they went to south they traveled similarly if we look at sangam age literature once again a lot of people from south they also uh, went to north right as far as till uh, himalayas some of them claim to have fed the uh, kaurav and pandav army Uh, during the uh, 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 you know uh, mahabharat right uh, uh, so interesting interesting details there uh, a lot of tamil kings are mentioned in this manner in this manner chera and uh, pandian kings if you look at the focus of the internal trade by 600 bce coinage had started developing right coinage had started developing and uh, these uh, you know uh, uh, trade routes were quite active what we can see is the two names which come out of all the jatak stories and other sources such as uh, 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 you know uh, ashtadhyayi uh, but we get to know about these two names right dakshinapath and uttarpath uttarpath basically connected your eastern part of india to the northern part while dakshin path it connects uh, kaushambi to ujjain and further not only to broch as the graphics shows but also to uh, pratishthan further south near godavari right this is uh, the best map that i could uh, find online Uh, but i'm sure better work can be done on this front and i'm sure some creative people will be doing it uh, this is uh, the uttarpath right uh, later this became the gt road later shersha suri first you know made it much better and called it sadak e azam uh, and then the britishers came in and they named it uh, gt road grand trunk road uh to dekho yahan par uh, 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 this entire prayag was very important prayag is the place where uh, you know uh, 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 ganga and yamuna uh, uh, come come to a confluence and uh, uh, at prayag there was just you know a place called as koshambi right now it's just a simple plain old village but uh, back in those days it must have been massive there is even an ashokan pillar present here because this was the place where somewhere the two trade routes met at koshambi another point jante hain uh, uh, ye kya kehte hain hmm. ha ye trade route ka galat depiction hai actually right this is not how we should actually be visualizing a trade route a trade route is better visualized as like this having a lot of link roads to other regions so koshambi right 
uh, that became one of the most important center right and uh, its cotton was very famous in fact the robes which buddhists wear it was called as kashya right because it came from kashi and this nearby region right kashi to khair thoda alag ho gaya main tumhe dusri baat bata gaya uh, but yeah, somewhere, you know, prayer, Koshambi was very important. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I should, uh, you know, correct myself. Kashya uh, kehte the, Buddhist robe ko, but it was because it was taken from Kashi, not Koshambi. I'm sorry, apologies. Okay, another attempt at, uh, you know, Uttarpath and Dakshinpath came to Pratishthan and once again, remember there will be further link routes in south as well. One very important port was Bharuch. Other very important port here was Tamra, Lipti. Right? In Bay of Bengal. Bharuch is primarily your mouth of Narmada. In those days it was called as Brigu Kach. Um, this is kind of the Z you can imagine once again. Right, see, these were the ancient trade routes, the earliest ones that we get to know. And they were somewhere trying to connect all these Mahajanapads. Interesting, isn't it? Maps up, I think, very fascinating to look at. Koshambi was uh, the capital of what's the kingdom what's the kingdom right and uh, it was a monarchy it was noted for cotton textiles many it was noted for cotton textiles but still remember kashiwal importance is a different fact sorry man apu confused kiya shayad maafi chahunga but remember kashi is kashi and kashi are related koshambi is not right uh, so many wealthy merchants were here and during the time of Buddha, during the time of Buddha, uh, the king here at Vats kingdom was a very fascinating person. His name is Udayan. His name is Udayan. And uh, Udayan was initially very anti-Buddhist. But then he later became uh, a Buddha worshipper. Right, and uh, he has found mention in several of the works of classical Sanskrit dramas. He has played the protagonist, the hero, right, and uh, you know, been depicted in a very, very fantastical manner. So, one very interesting character he is uh, he starred in, so he was the hero, Udayan, he was the hero of. Uh, Swapnavasvadatta and a couple of plays of uh, Harsh as well. Harsh of Kannauj. Take additional information. This is considered as the earliest Sanskrit drama. Earliest Sanskrit drama. Okay. Now, uh, b b moving ahead with our theme here, moving ahead with our theme here of trade routes in ancient India, I would now like to highlight uh, the how was the interconnectivity here. Try and you know appreciate that for a while. How can we? This is how historians do their work, man. Isn't it fascinating? Deko, what they have uh, uh, read from the literary sources is that Ashoka organized the uh, Third Buddhist Council. In 250 BCE and at that place he sent from that place he sent several uh, missions Buddhist missions to expand the Dhamma right and uh, these missions were sent to different regions so from that you can come to the conclusions that there must have been some kind of linkages existing right so for example we are being told certain very interesting name Kashmira, Gandhar, these are Pali versions, right? 
Then we have uh, Mahimsa, Mahimsa, this region, Andhra coast, right? Then we have a uh, Vanavasi, Vanavasi, this is the Karnataka coast, uh, Kanara coast, which is mentioned here as. Uh, then, then under a uh, mission at uh, Aparanta, Gujarat, UPSC has a knack of mentioning one of these names in the options. Every year they do that. Agar main nahi maan sakta ki ab ye yadgar sakte. It's impossible. I'm not expecting you to remember these facts. Remember the point of all this hard work that we are collectively doing. I'm sure it must not be very pleasant. Right? Listening to this unnecessary shit. Right? But uh, remember our objective. Okay? Uh... Ah, that time it will, you know, somewhere help us. And if it does, who knows? Right? To both of us. Isn't it? Yeah, man. Absolutely. So, Aparantak was Gujarat. Maharatta, of course. Maharashtra. Yavanakalok. Yavanakalok. Yavan, who are Yavans? These are basically the Greeks. Yavan kyo? Ionian si se aare hai na? To uska corruption. From Ionian they became Yavan. Probably I'm guessing. Uh, 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 and this was, you know, where were Greeks? The Greeks were here in Bactria. These are known as Bactrian Greeks. Then, then they also sent to Hellenistic kingdoms. Another name, Himavant. Himavant is this region, scholars believe. Nepal. And then uh, Suvarnabhumi. This is Myanmar. Idhar se gai shayad. From Bay of Bengal. Suvarnabhumi they went. Suvarnadweep is the island portion. Jo niche wala hai. Okay. And of course, this is where Ashoka's Son, one of the sons and daughter themselves went. Tamra Parani. This is the ancient name of uh, Sri Lanka. Tamra Parani. Okay. So these regions must have been connected. And later in the post Mauryan era, these regions were utilized. These, sorry, these links, these roots were utilized. To usher an era of prosperity. At times, Gupta era is called as the classical age. Which is true to quite an extent. But at times, people also say that Gupta was the golden age. That is questionable. Because maximum inflow of gold and silver that takes place takes place in the post Mauryan time, the time of around 200 BCE to around uh, 250 CE or 220 CE probably. Right? That was the time when really massive things happened. So these roots, their importance was realized in that way gradually. Okay. This is also one map that I would like to tell you in uh, this context that in the post Mauryan era, why so much of, uh, you know, uh, uh, prosperity came into the picture? Why? Because in the post Mauryan time, Central Asians came in and they managed to, especially the Kushans, they were a nomadic tribe. They managed to enter the subcontinent, right? And they managed to combine Central Asia and North India into one empire and resulted in this kind of an empire. Can you beat this man? This is like, wow! This is the map of their empire and this is their maximum influence, the dotted shaded line. 
This is how much their influence ran. And they managed to funnel all these, you know, artistic goods, you know, producers, etc. They managed to funnel it to this route. What is this route? What is this route? This route is what is wrongly, historically, inaccurately called as silk route. Right? Silk was not the only commodity which was being traded here. And this was never one route. There were so many other link routes here. The best one was this. Uttarpath was linked to where? I'll show you. Hang on. This map. Yeah. The entire Bactria region, Dushanbe region, all that is now interconnected with your Mathura and Varanasi. Can you believe it? The amount of natural, you know, uh, interaction which must have gone. Right? This is where we will notice um, all these, uh, uh, you know, Greek influences. This is where we will notice, uh, uh, you know, emergence of regional schools of art, Amravati, etc. Right? And, uh, okay. So, uh, all this, you know, very good connectivity was provided and all these goods were funneled into this route. What, why was this route so important? This route was so important because during this time, Kushans were very lucky. Why they were lucky? They were lucky in the sense that on their right was a very strong Han Chinese empire. And on their left was an equally strong and mighty Roman Empire. And they were trading. And we were placed perfectly to use the situation to our advantage. But gradually, this advantage will be lost. Hunas will enter. Huna, Huna Central Asian tribe. They will end the Kushan power. Right? They will, they will end, uh, 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 you know, during the Gupta times that will happen. Chalo, uh, maybe that some other day, right? Maybe that some other day. Uh, chalo, with that, I think uh, I can close this uh, topic here. Uh, I hope it was useful. Right? Uh, and uh, have fun. Bye.